Hello and welcome to the Side One YouTube channel. My name is Ray, and in this video, Fred's Left Hand Part Eight, we're going to look at the sensors we installed in the hand and test them out with my robot lab. So the setup I have here is a Raspberry Pi Three running my robot lab, one point one point version is it one point one point eight five one. Uh, I've got running on it, uh, you can see that on this, this is my screen here. Uh, the program AB, which is the brains of our robot, and this one's connected to the Discord bot, and you can actually talk to it online as we speak. Uh, I have got the Raspberry service running. This is the Raspberry Pi service which accesses the GPIO. So we can have a look at that. Now, in last week's video, those of you who may have been a little more astute may have picked up the fact that we only had 70 and 40 coming up in the I2C bus scan. Um, I might just make that screen a little bit bigger if I can. didn't work. Okay, so we only had the 70 and the 40 coming up. Uh, 49, 48 and 68 weren't coming up. And that's because I had a broken wire on the VCC in the hand where it was connected in the first place. Uh, if you remember back during construction, I broke the ground wire. Uh, it turns out as I was putting everything together, I also broke the positive wire. So I've repaired that and now they turn up in the I2C bus scan. In order to use those, uh, we have to install their services or run their services. So for that, we will go to runtime. Let's start with the uh, MPU 6050. So we're just going to create an MPU 6050. 50 service and I'm going to call this left because when it goes into Fred, Fred's got two other MPU 6050s already and this is the one for the left hand. I may yet put one in the bicep, I'm not sure where I'm going to mount it yet but I'll try to put one in the bicep. Okay so let's start that service. We've got a bus one. Remember, if you're running this through an Arduino, you need to select bus zero. Address 68 is the default for the MPU 6050. You can hardware change its address to B69. And our sample rate's okay. So let's change our controller to Raspberry Pi. It's automatically attached, but we do need to start it. Now, I have found that different MPU 6050s have different calibrations required and one of the things that we need to do is change the gyro X in this case for this particular build. It's currently reading minus three, which means it's continually trying to rotate and accelerating, which is not strictly correct. It's actually stationary, so we need to apply an offset to that. Uh, that will be done in program in Python because there's no way of doing it through the interface here. Alright, so if I rotate the whole arm, you can see this moves. If I lift the hand, you can see that moves as well. Once the calibration is applied for the gyro, uh, and that's then reading zero, the pitch and roll will actually level out. Now you will find there should be an acceleration in one direction. In this case, it's the x direction of one. 
and that's the direction pointing down towards the ground. All right, let's see if we get to the next one. So we've got 48 and 49. And this is an ADS 11115. Left input one. Start that service. Right, so the bus is one. Again, set it's zero if it's, you're connecting this to an Arduino. 48 is default address. The controller will be Raspberry Pi and we can attach. Now when we click on refresh, we will get a set of readings. If I push on say this finger and take another reading, you'll see that one of them has changed quite a bit. That would be ADC2. ADC1. Now what's surprising about this is this is currently running on 3.3 volt and the lower voltage range of the sensor is supposed to be 4.5 volt so that's working better than I expected. We do have another one of these so let's install the second one. Okay, so this one controls mostly the thumb. So you can see ADC0 changes quite a lot when I press on the thumb. And we also have a temperature sensor in this index finger, which is connected to ADC1. If I put my hand on this, You can see it's starting to climb up as the temperature in the finger increases. So what we can do is we can write a routine that takes the analog input from that finger and map it to an actual temperature range so that we can get an actual temperature. The uh, finger sensors, we can actually set a threshold level. If it goes above that threshold level or below that uh, threshold level, it can signal that the finger has touched something. So we can get an idea of what's going on. But that'll do for this video, so I'm a short one. If you like these videos, don't forget, don't forget to click on subscribe, like, ring that notification bell. It's a form of support that helps the channel a great deal and costs you absolutely nothing. If you'd like to help the channel further, I do have a Patreon account and there is a link in the description below. I'd like to thank my long-term Patreons, Go Lucky, Lorenz Berger, both the IOPs, and my builder, El Morales 45 If you'd like to talk to Fred online, uh, you can join him in Discord. If you've got any questions, also ask in there and I'll be happy to answer them. There is a link in the description and we'll see you in the next video.